Hey everyone, quick pre-show message. In today's episode, there's an unusually high number of things that relate to videos and images that you might want to look at while you're listening. So I've put links in the notes, but also you might want to watch the YouTube version of this episode where all the videos and images sync up with what we're saying. You can find that on the Unmade Podcast YouTube channel or again, a link in the notes. All right, let's begin. In Adelaide there was a shop called Berkowitz But everybody knew the name was wrong And all the people who come along Can't stop singing the song The sofa shop is the only stop For the sofa you need For the sofa you need The sofa shop, yeah, come and drop in Fabric match your curtains to the sofa shop. Ain't gonna cost what you think it will. Don't you do a thing until you see the sofa shop. So that sofa shop cover comes from Joe, who's a multiple contributor, Tim. That's remarkable, wasn't it? I mean, really, that's incredible. Are you familiar with the work of the Beatles, man? Are you. Do you go back yes. that far? Hmm. I, I know I know them. I, I, I am familiar with their work. My dad was a big, big Beatles fan. My dad was around when the Beatles formed. Your dad was around when actual Beatles formed in evolution. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, who composed the song, said, I was digging through my own dad's cassette tape collection and found this old relic. It seems to be an early demo of the Beatles' Penny Lane, but with different lyrics. I don't know why they decided to change it but it's certainly a tragedy it was never released hope you enjoy it thanks again for making such a great show i do visit kfc every time a new episode comes out so the anticipation is twofold (laughs) hope you're both well joe i like that she set it up with a bit of a bit of a narrative too that's nice work i think joe's a boy oh oh well thanks joe (laughs) (laughs) I'm just so used to the other Joe who's... Uh, yeah, Colonel Joe, who's a lady. Colonel Joe. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. That's oh, marvellous work. Because oh, it's Penny Lane, obviously, and yeah. which famously was released like as a single and, and should have ended up on Sgt Pepper's, which would have improved a great album even more, but didn't. I like it. I like Penny Lane. Do you get a KFC every time a new episode comes out? Or do you double up and get a new KFC every time you record one and then when it's released? I'm I'm kind of a I, – I do it in the reverse order. That is, it's the one night of the week I don't get KFC. <laughs> like <laughs> – You get your endorphin rush from the show so you don't need the KFC. <laughs> I switched somewhere along the line and I have KFC every night except when an episode comes out. So that, that I find that motivating for us to record more because, you know, like yeah. it's good for my health just to sort of <laughs> – Right. To resist and hold back. By the way, thank you to every single person on Twitter and Instagram who contacted us to let us know about this new KFC romance movie. I think it's on some like Lifetime channel or something. KFC like teamed up with this channel and they've made this romantic film about like a young muscle bound Colonel Sanders having like, you know, <laughs> racy, ro- racy, romancy type Mills and Boone. And we've seen the trailer, but we haven't got our hands on the actual film yet here in England or Tim in Australia. So if anyone's got a copy of the whole film that can help us watch it, we want to watch it and review it for you all. But so far, we've just had tantalizing glimpses of the trailer. Oh, how awesome would it be to sit down with some, like, KFC and, and watch a film about the Colonel? That would be amazing. That would be truly something. He has a secret recipe that's going to change the world. Harlan claims to have some secret recipe. A secret recipe? Is that guy playing the Colonel the guy that was in Saved by the Bell? Uh, he, he looks like him. Oh, he does look a bit like And I think he does some hosting of some, you know, like sporty sort of shows as well, like eSports or something like that. Uh, he's popped up somewhere else on some gonna, documentary I've noticed. but I'm going to look him up. Mario Lopez. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's that is guy. It? Wow. Oh, look, that's two very impressive credits under his belt. <laughs> 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 
Like, how could you improve on Saved by the Bell? I know. Play the Colonel in a racy romance movie. <laughs> I guess they had Michael Keaton did The Founder, you know, the history of McDonald's, and that was a very successful film. It's quite an intriguing film too. So I was always wondering whether they would do something about the Colonel. I didn't know they'd go this kind of angle, though. This is really something else. Who the hell are you? Harlan Sanders, the new chef. It's uh, it's quite something. Anyway, watch this space. I'll put a link to the trailer in the notes for the episode, but we'll uh, we'll try and talk to you about the film. Time for a bit of uh, housekeeping. I don't know. We always call it housekeeping. Is that the right name? At, at In your church services, when you do that little thing at the start where there are messages about, you know, you know, there's a new lock on the toilets and we're having a meeting <laughs> on Wednesday and stuff like that. Like, you know, like just like just like basic stuff, like, you know, that you have to do that's not about church. What do you call that? Like those messages. We put a lot of it in the community update email, you know, about when the kids' club's happening and all that kind of stuff. And Yeah. But um, the – and a link to like last week's sermon, that sort of thing. But if it's mentioned in the church, it's we call it notices. There's a few notices of stuff that's going on. Don't forget, notices? you know, the Christmas services this week are at this time and that kind of thing. Should we call it notices then or should we call it community update or civilian update? The civilian update, yeah, yeah. Civilian update? I think we call it housekeeping because it's kind of clearing stuff out the way before we can get down to business. But yeah. we never seem to really get down to business. <laughs> <We're> just- <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, we're, we're like 70 episodes in and we still haven't got down to business. <laughs> no. We- <laughs> what is our business? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, But I do have some notices or some civilian updates. Notices. I like notices. You know what you should have is a nice PowerPoint slide to go with your notices. Like, (laughs) I have to say, like when I came along to your church, because I, you know, I don't go to church that much these days, so I haven't, I haven't Mm. sat through many church services. One of the big disappointments was the use of PowerPoint. Why was that disappointing? I don't know. Because you remember. Yeah, it's just like I like, I like to think of churches as old fashioned with. Full of like stained glass windows and nice wooden pews and things like that, and seeing PowerPoint in that environment just jars. <laughs> yeah, I I'm not. I'm sorry. I, look, to be honest, I actually quite agree with you. I like I don't like a big like churches are very high tech now. You have multiple screens and images and moving images and all that kind of stuff, like a yeah. like a rock video clip or something. You know, like a pop. You know, like if you go to see Justin Bieber, you know, screens and everything everywhere. But ours is an older building and I like to play to that. So at the moment, we're not using it at all. Like for this Christmas season, we've like, get rid of the screen. Let's print it out old school style with lovely artwork. And yeah, yeah so you should come this month, man. All right. Well, I'll, I'll tell a great, I'll quickly tell a great story. Apologies if I've told this on the podcast before, because I tell this story all the time, but it's one of my favourites. And it's about our good mate, Chris, who seems to come up on the podcast more than we do. <laughs> but when he was a, when he was a youngster, he used to go to church and it was in the days of overhead projectors. Oh, yeah. They would all sing their songs at the start and sing along. And some Someone had the job on the overhead projector of changing the transparencies that had the lyrics to the songs, the words to the songs, so everyone could sing along. And obviously, uh, the songs would change, so you'd have to put a new transparency on, or maybe the song was quite long and required multiple transparencies to, you know, keep up with the lyrics. And he used to sit at the back of the church, and obviously you would see the shadow of the person's hand go over the projector as they changed the transparencies. And for many, many years, he thought that giant hand up on the wall was God telling all the people what song they were supposed to be singing. (laughs) This giant hand of God, now you will sing this song. (laughs) That is awesome. Yeah. That, that is awesome. That is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> of all the things God could be doing in church, he's like, we've he's been given that job. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you're an overhead projector this week. It's a big job. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. That is fantastic. Yeah. There you go. I, re- I read the other day, another little church story. I read the other day a guy was saying that they, they, they were singing some, like it's like a really old-fashioned lovely hymn, which had the, the line at the end, you know, make me forever thine, you know, which is the old fashioned King James way of saying forever yours. So make me forever thine. But someone that the E had dropped off the end on the PowerPoint. 
<laughs> make me forever thin. <laughs> That'd yeah. get me going to church. <laughs> well, that's it. He says I just he says I just raised my hands and st- <laughs> and sang with more gusto than I'd ever sang. <laughs> So back to our notices, just to let people know, a couple of episodes ago, we featured Mrs. Hine in our wholesome episode. And since then, a little thing that we did off the podcast, but we did over on the Patreon page is Mrs. Hine agreed to do an Ask Me Anything. So we taught her what an Ask Me Anything was. And a bunch of Patreon supporters posted questions for her that she answered. So if you would like to go and see them, you don't have to be a Patreon supporter. That page is unlocked so anyone can look at it. It was just the patrons that were asking the questions. But if you want to go and see that kind of Q&A, I will put a link in the notes. That was very good fun for me because I spent a couple of nights texting your mum all sorts of questions and then waiting for her answers. Very, very (laughs) enjoyable. (laughs) Yeah. And and how proficient was mum on the the text with you, man? Was that... An easy... She was all right. No, she no. was all right. She was good. It took her a while and she didn't use punctuation the way I would, but that doesn't mean she's wrong. I do think she found it a little bit exhausting, though, because on the third night she texted me and said, oh, I'm really tired, Brady. I just need to go to sleep. I can't do it. <laughs> so I said, oh, I think, I think you've done enough. <laughs> <laughs> she probably had a hard day, like, buying carrots or something. Like yeah. <laughs> well, you know she's always on the lookout for glazed ginger. Oh, that's right, yeah. Up and back, up and down, up and down, Marion Shopping Centre. It's always fun. We always talk about with, with mum about her ability to walk somewhere. So if it's like, okay, mum, we're going to go to the movies or something or we're going to go to the football and then she's like, oh, I don't know if I could walk all that way. And I'll say, but mum, you go to Marion Shopping Centre, big Westfield Shopping Centre, and you walk back. You do laps of the place, right, shopping. Yeah. I said, so yeah. I always measure things for her like it's two Marion <laughs> Shopping Centre lengths. Like it's <laughs> like... <laughs> And in her mind, it's like, oh, I can do that. That's how Olympic running races should be measured. <laughs> <laughs> Who won the three Marion shopping centres this year? <laughs> That's right. But back and up and back. Yeah. If there is just one reason to go along and have a look at those Q&As on the Ask Me Anything, it is because Mrs. Hines shared the recipe for her ginger cake, her Dutch ginger cake. She gave that away quite freely. I thought we would hold on to that as a bit of a family secret, but no, no, there. she's no, she's no uh, Colonel Sanders. She's no. uh, she's op- she's open source with the with the herbs and spices. He has a secret recipe that's going to change the world. Harlan claims to have some secret recipe. A secret recipe. Coincidentally, Mum's Dutch ginger cake also has eleven herbs and spices. <laughs> 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 Why it has such an interesting taste. Uh, and just another thing to let people know about that they can go and find elsewhere that they won't find in the podcast feed, and that is our second ever uh, Patreon list reading. This time it was my turn, uh, but Tim joined me. You can go and check that out. There, again, there'll be links and a link on the YouTube channel, and there's a bit of fun and joking around beforehand and during and after, so it's a bit like it's a bit like a normal episode, you know, good fun, but with... Vast tracts of me attempting to read names in between. So uh, do go and have a look. You did a great job. You were very smooth. Oh, thank you. Here's a little taste of what it sounds like so you know what you're in for. William Schneider, Niharika Prasad, Andrew Canyon, Sophie Morris, Cold underscore Ankles. And there's also a little bonus section where Tim does uh, some Donald Duck voices. Preben L. Madsen. <laughs> Richard Doyle. Richard <laughs> Doyle. <laughs> but uh, it's good fun, so go and have go and have a listen if you like. And that is the end of uh, notices. What's our next song? Oh no, wait, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta wait. We gotta wait for God to tell us with his giant hand. <laughs> giant um, hand yeah. on the overhead projector. Some of our listeners may not know overhead projectors, but they they they'll. But, Everywhere for a while, weren't they? We had them in in classrooms, and um, it's how how teachers would stand there and give us notes, writing it on the um, on that clear is it cellophane or what is it? You know that that would put it up on the screen. No, it's not cellophane. Cellophane's like light and crinkly. What is it called? That 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 stuff. I don't know what that plastic's called. Plastic's I wonder slow. if I wonder if there were people who thought like the future would be everyone would have overhead projectors in their pocket like miniaturized overhead projectors on their wrists and like, like visionaries thought that every, everyone will have their own personal overhead projectors in the future how wrong they were 
All right. Podcast ideas. You go first. I've been carrying this thing for a while, so why don't you go you've been, first? You've been right, carrying it, yeah. All right. Well, I have got some good ideas, but I I haven't gone too far from the path today because hot on the heels of my idea in the last episode where I did my wake-up call idea, I want to do a podcast called The Bedtime Podcast. And this is kind of the opposite of what my idea was last time. Last time, my idea was people talking as soon as they wake up. This The Bedtime Podcast is a podcast recorded after you've gotten into bed. So you're all snuggled up maybe with your hot drink or your water and you've pulled the blankets over yourself and you're all warm and you're just reflecting on the day. And then you just do a quick little call, maybe, you know, you quick call to your co-host and you just talk about your day. How was your day? How are you feeling? You've got it's sort of very peaceful, relaxing, and it's kind of just a full stop to the day. A little a little chat between between you and your listeners at the end of the day. And a lot of my inspiration for this comes from childhood. Do you remember when we were kids? Channel ten used to uh, I don't know what time they did it. Was it seven or eight o'clock? I don't even know. They would show this 30 second clip of Fat Cat going to bed. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> no, because I grew up in Victoria in Melbourne, so it's a bit. Didn't you have a Fat Cat? So, Fat Cat, for people who don't know, was like a, a children's TV show. And Fat Cat himself, I think Fat Cat was a man, was a person in a giant cat suit. Uh, you know, so kids loved Fat Cat. Fat Cat and Friends, the show was called. But what Channel 10 did, I think, as a bit of a community service and to help parents persuade kids to go to bed, was at the same time each night, like during the ads before the grown-up TV show started, there would be this little clip with nice bedtime music and, like, the host of the show, who I think was Patsy Bisco, would be putting Fat Cat, like, to bed and he'd be getting in his giant bed and in his cat suit and she'd be putting the blanket on him or something and and there'd be, like, nice music and it would be explained from the TV that it's bedtime and that's why Fat Cat's going to bed. And I think parents could then use that to their kids and say, oh, look, see, Fat Cat's going to bed, so now you can go to bed. We would now like to remind everyone that some of the programmes to follow are possibly not suitable for children. So from all of us here at Channel 10, it's good night girls and boys so it was just it was just this sweet thing that was done every night yeah. and i used to love it like i used to it was a real like totem pole it was a landmark of the night and i like the idea of the bedtime podcast being that it's something you listen to every night maybe it just recaps the news of the day it could be very personal like what what the hosts did today or it could just be oh what was in the news today or what's going on in the world or you could adapt the idea and you could have guests and you talk to them as they're going to bed. Uh, I think there are lots of different ways you could do the bedtime podcast. That's true. That's true. Pillow talk would be another name for this. Maybe a little bit Ooh, too yeah. obvious. but it the- also might be a little bit racy. I don't know. It might give, it might give people the wrong idea. But oh, unless, right. unless it's a racy podcast. You know, <laughs> With fat if you, if you want to If you want to veer away from my fat cat idea. <laughs> Just to clarify as well, you mentioned Fat Cat getting into bed in his cat suit. Just to clarify, mm. it's not like Fat Cat got into a cat suit. Fat Cat is the cat suit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for people that, that haven't be- seen it, for people who've oh, never yeah, seen right. Fat Cat, I want them to picture what you know, what it is, and it's like it's a it's an adult in a giant cat suit getting into bed. That's right. So, you know, it's not like an it's not like a a four legged small cat getting into its basket. It kind of has this kind of humanoid getting into bed look about it that would help persuade right. the kids. Like yeah. Donald Duck doesn't get into a duck suit. Like he is a duck suit. Like <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know. Oh look, I, I found Patsy Visco. Did did you ever see these fat cat going to bed? Have you ever even seen it? I don't. I didn't watch it. I, I used to watch Fat Cat, so I know Fat Cat. Used to yeah. watch it lots and lots. I didn't like it a lot, but it was just kind of on in the morning as a, as a very young kid. Yeah, I have a vague memory of this was not a regular thing that I would watch, but I think I have. I know what you mean. I think I've seen it before on some <laughs> nostalgic, you know, remember when sort of show or something. Yeah. More research is going to be done into this. So I'm going to find <laughs> oh, here it is. SAS Ten. That's Adelaide, 1984. Yeah, this is it. I found it, man. I found it. All right. Do you want to see it? Yeah, yeah, send it. Just make sure I'm sending it to you and not my wife because that will get that will like that will be hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> Patsy Bisco was she was sort of like a host that went off to become quite big, didn't she? Oh yeah. Well, she she was like a children's musician as well. She was a, quite a good guitarist. Oh, your fat cat's not being put to bed by Patsy Bisco. It's by like a mother cat. Who is this mother cat? She doesn't. I don't know. 
I don't know. Fat cat like reads for like about 10 seconds and then like just goes to sleep, but he kind of looks like he's passing out because he puts it. Because fat cat's eyes don't close, the big plastic eyes don't close, the actor has to put their big paw over the eyes. <laughs> It's quite because it would look weird if Fat Fat Cat just lay in bed with his eyes wide open. <laughs> Who was this mother cat? So they went and got another cat suit made just for this, but we never see Fat Cat's mum on any other occasion. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. What, I don't know. There's lots of questions to be answered here, but uh, but anyway, were you a bigger fan of Fat Cat than you were of Humphrey Bear? No, I would say I was more a Humphrey B Bear guy than Fat yeah. Cat. But I did like a bit of Fat Cat too. And if you don't know who Humphrey is, just Google that. That's what, uh, he's he's a bit of a legend. We'll we'll have all the we'll have all the all the links will be in the notes, people. It's going to be an absolute smorgasbord of <laughs> links in the notes today <laughs> for, for, for weird stuff to watch. Uh, there you go, bedtime. Uh, the bedtime podcast. Look, can I say I think this is a pretty good idea. I, I, can I just say it, there's one thing that marks conversations like this at night though, and that is kind of long pauses. You know, like you sort of go, oh, wet today or something like that or rainy and you go, yeah. And then you sort of go back to reading your book or whatever and, and you, there's a lot of, mm, mm. And it's like, and then there's a lot of remind me comments, like <laughs> remind me to X, Y, Z, remind me to do it. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. And like, what time are you getting up tomorrow? <laughs> what are you getting up? It's like, oh, I've got so-and-so. Oh, uh, all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Remind me to get eggs. Remind me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the podcast could be that if you want. <laughs> That's just like long pauses, yeah. Or um, or, or um, uh, since the invention of the iPad, I think ninety percent of going to bed conversations are um, a wife on realestate dot com going, oh, this one looks <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's also uh, banned subjects. Any subjects that cause anxiety or could prevent sleep so you would never say i'm a bit worried about that leak in the bathroom <laughs> like, you know, like, like, like 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 that's not to be brought up at 10 o'clock at night <laughs> that's right yeah the to-do list is done it's closed yeah we're not adding yeah. to it or you yeah. can add to it for Ooh. tomorrow but can yeah. you send me an email reminding me to do that that's one long comment that i often say. Ooh. oh have you heard about that axe murderer that's been breaking into homes lately <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy at the foot of the bed? It's like, <laughs> it's like not now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not a time for jokes and pranks as well, I've, I've learned. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. All right. Nice idea. Job done. Job done. It's time for Storyblocks, who are the sponsor of today's episode. And Tim, I've got a special brilliant idea for this story blocks section uh, that we're going to do in just a second. I have devised a game involving story blocks, but before we do, I have to do the essential bit so people like know what story blocks is in case they're like first time ever uh, listeners. Story blocks is a great online resource. It's a library of stock footage, uh, pictures, audio. A huge amount of material that you can use in your creations, whatever you're making. You pay a once monthly fee and you can use it all royalty free. Uh, go to storyblocks.com slash unmade to check it out. Make sure you use the slash unmade so people know you came from here. Now, Tim. Yes. To demonstrate the amazingness of this library of material. I have done something. I've made a little game, a little thing that I'm going to spring on you now. You don't know what's coming. Now, people who are listening, you can either just listen to listen to how this unfolds or you can play along as well. And I will include the links so you can do so. So, Tim, what I've done is I've made a short video called The A to Z of Storyblocks. And what you're going to see is 26 videos 26 sh video shots that i've taken from storyblocks and each one has a letter a b c d all the way through the alphabet so in the top left corner you will see a letter of the alphabet and they go in order mm -hmm. alphabetical order and you'll see a video and you'll have a few seconds looking at that shot and i want you to tell me what the word is that starts with that letter so it could be, the first thing could be an aardvark and there could be an A at the top, and you just have to say aardvark, 
and then you wait for the next shot, which will be the letter B, and there'll be a shot of something starting with B. Make sense? So I'm simply describing, saying what I see. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like, right. a, it's like a, you know, you see the picture and see if you can guess what the word I'm trying to convey is. Most of them are very easy. A couple of them may not be. I don't know, you know, because I made it. It's obvious to me. I don't know how, I don't know how easy this will be. All right. So Tim and I have both got the video ready to run. You might want to have it ready to run as well. And Tim, on the count of three, when I say three, we'll both press play. So we won't stop here. We're just going to, I'm just going to say it, then it'll move to the yeah, next. We'll it's going to say, say it. it. And so if there's one you don't get, the pressure's on because you might have to pass if you can't get it in time. There's no pausing. High pressure. Okay. High pressure. Okay. When I say three, you press play. One. All right. Two. Three. Apple. Yeah. Brain. Yes. Crocodile. Well done. I don't know. Elephant. All right. Feet. Grease. <laughs> Hippopotamus. <laughs> ice. Well, ice water. Uh, Jesus. Koala. Uh, lights or LED? Um, hmm, I don't know. Noodles. Owl. Potato. Quill. Roof. Surfing. Or surf. Tunnel. Udder. <laughs> Uh, is it uh, the Vatican? Uh, I don't know. Wilderness, is it? Xylophone. Yoke. And zipper. There you go. How fun was that? That was great. I could I could keep going. Let's do more letters. <laughs> <laughs> don't stop at 26. <laughs> it's a pity. It's a pity. I could just make these for you all day. And I could, Tim, because there is so much incredible... Footage on story blocks. No matter what you're looking for, they're going to have it. So you're saying there's more than 26 bits of video on story blocks. Is that <laughs> right? There most, there most definitely is. Uh, shall we go through the ones you didn't get? Yes. So you didn't get D. That was the skyline of Dubai. Oh, right. Yeah. I've been to Dubai, but only in the airport. So, yep. L, you said lights, which I thought you might have said. I was actually looking for lasers. Oh, I think uh, I switched it to LED. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Slightly more specific, but wrong. M, you didn't get. That was the Milky Way. Uh, of course. W was a witch. Oh. She had a broomstick. She had a you oh, know, woman okay. in the hood with her broomstick. Look, I, I, it was like wilderness or wind, I even thought, because it was a bit no. shadowy. But uh, Storyblocks.com slash unmade. Any, anything you want. Knock yourselves out. Maybe you could make your own A to Z from Storyblocks material and send it to us and we'll get Tim to give it a go. Yes, yes. I'd love it. That's a fun game. It's yeah. a, it's, it's like- right. <laughs> As if you're not going to go home and play that with your daughters tonight using my hard made video. Oh, no, that's that's perfect. That's that's lovely. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is one minute and 18 seconds taken care of tonight. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll, we'll do it twice. Do All it right, once. yeah. <laughs> Tim might need to do it twice. I think the girls will ace it. Go. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I can do this. <laughs> oh, come on, girls! That was the Milky Way, you idiots! <laughs> All right. Thank you, Story Blocks. Well done, Story Blocks. All right, Tim. Talk about burying the lead. We have got something huge now because it is time for. Sp- And Tim, before we get to your spoon of the week, I have a spoon of the week because the moment has arrived. It's here. It's in my hand. I'm holding it now. I'm holding the display box for the Unmade Podcast souvenir spoon, which I'm now opening. Oh, it's in my hand. You are so lucky. What a thing of beauty it is. I know you've wow. only seen pictures so far. Yours, Indeed. yours are in the post. But tell me your thoughts. Well, <clears throat> I think it's it's I think it's one of the 
truly great achievements of humankind. I mean... <laughs> Engineering, <laughs> indeed, indeed. It's uh, it should be in a museum. It's a bit understated. <laughs> understated. <laughs> the bottom I'm half's joking. understated. The bottom half's the silver, understated. The crown, the colours. It's um, it's it's marvellous. It really is. I wouldn't say it's overstated. No, uh, no, no. It's regal. Regal. I think it's. I think it's bloody fantastic. Something that Marie Antoinette would have used. Maybe I'm looking at it slightly with proud parent eyes. I don't know because it was such an ordeal. But <laughs> like, I just can't see a floor in it. I look at it like, oh, and I get all misty and doe-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> it is something beautiful. It is. Um, it's 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 funny that you can just have one of something like this made uh, of such <laughs> infinite beauty, and it'll last forever. That's the funny thing. You make something, it lasts forever. It'll last a thousand years. It'll outlast us. <laughs> it will. <laughs> so nine of them have been sent to lucky Patreon supporters and another one will be sent today. We'll do a spin of the wheel shortly to see who's getting it. But first, Tim, let's have an actual spin. <laughs> It's a very uh, exciting spoon this week, and I think in particularly personally for you, yes. but I also have a very strong personal connection to this spoon as well. The spoon tonight is of Glenelg in South Australia, which is a beach town um, on the coast uh, near the city of Adelaide. I would call it more a suburb. Yeah, I would call it a suburb of Adelaide, yeah. But it's the it's sort of the primary beach location, um, and that is it's got that sort of little boulevard where they sell fish and chips and an ice cream. It's got a jetty, you know, a pier. It's that kind of place, and a beach. And uh, it's got a little bit of historical significance too. So up the top end, what do you call the top end again where your hand goes? I, uh, it, well, the handle, I guess that's it. It's oh, right, got, yeah. The famous uh, ship. It's made like like a shield, and it has the mm. uh, the buffalo. Um, yeah. Now remind me, Brady. Having grown up in here in Adelaide, this is uh, an early explorer. Is that right, or is this what immigrants came on, or what? What's the significance of the buffalo? Maybe it was Governor Hindmarsh's ship, but the first British governor that came to South Australia to like proclaim the state, you know, uh, to be a new colony. Maybe that was his ship, I think. And they, they oh. got off the ship at Glenelg and proclaimed on, in 1836 uh, that this was, a, this was a new British colony. And shortly after, Adelaide was kind of, you know, situated nearby, you know, a, a number of miles from that particular location. Adelaide has since expanded to envelop Glenelg, but Glenelg is where they landed and proclaimed the colony of South Australia. And I believe the buffalo was the ship. Is that why we have Proclamation Day? Is that right? Is that where it they is? And that's also why our basketball team's called the Adelaide 36ers, because it was 1836. <laughs> I did not know that. Oh, yeah. that's great. <laughs> there you go. I- <laughs> Every day's a school day. They should be called. <laughs> they should be called the Buffaloes. Uh, <laughs> And down the scoopy bit is a painting. I love this when they do a little painting inside the scoopy bit. And hmm. um, this one is the old gum tree. Now, I've, again, I don't know, but I know on Proclamation Day, like the premiers down there, what's what's this bent over gum tree? Man? Well, I don't believe it was bent over at the time. Maybe it was, but that was the that distinctive tree is where the proclamation happened. Inland a bit, so that's like the site of proclamation. So it's the location where the colony was was officially kind of proclaimed and the ceremony was held. So the old gum tree at Glenelg is like you know this historic has forever been this really historic site, and the tree, as you as you say, is sort of bent over. It's not really alive anymore, and now it's under like a, like a roof. They've built a big shelter over it now with corrugated iron to protect it, but it's still this sort of you know historic. South Australian site. Like, the old gum tree was pretty legendary. Like, I've only been there a few times myself. It's, like, hidden away a bit, but it's, like, a pretty cool place to go. It's like a, you know, Adelaide icon. Where is it? It's obviously near Glenelg. Yeah, it's in Glenelg. It's it's sort of set back in the suburbs a bit uh, in Glenelg. I've never been there. 
No, it's just like amongst a bunch of houses and stuff. It's not like it's in a park, you know, a little little public park surrounded oh, right. by houses. And it's like in suburbia. But yeah, you should go there. I'll go and have a look. Yeah, take the kids. Sounds exciting. That's right. Yeah. So it's bent yeah. over all the time. It's not like they bent it over to make the proclamation and then and then you I, know it's been. I don't think so. I think the tree was upright. I've just gone onto the um, onto the Wikipedia page, and it says the tree itself probably a red gum had died by 1907. Its decayed outer surface was encased in concrete in 1963. All right, so that's like a concrete casing of the tree by the looks of it. So I don't know if it was bent over in that way when they did the proclamation or it was just a nice-looking tree. It's like, where should we do the proclamation? Well, let's do it next to this old, this bent tree, Um, Mm. which looks like a bit of an arch, I guess. It does look, compared to other trees, a little bit interesting. All right, so that's there. Yep, yep. This is actually quite a high quality spoon, I think, though. On the back, like I think this is I love it. Got Australian made silver plated, so it's actually silver plated, which is lovely. So this is a. I think it's one of the best spoons you've chosen so far. Of course, I'm particularly partial to Glenelg because I was born in Glenelg. I was born at Glenelg Community Hospital, so I'm a I'm a Glenelg boy. Grew up supporting the Glenelg Footy Club, the Tigers. I'm surprised you're not mentioned on the spoon here, man. You you don't feature at all. Well, I mean, well, I, mean, I, I think the old gum tree is just like code for me, isn't it? Like, you know, that's just what I'm known around town as. Nah, it is. It's Brady, the, the old gum tree. <laughs> it is half of a B on its side, I guess. So yeah. It is. <laughs> there is a man standing under the, the tree with a blue shirt. Perhaps that's supposed to be you. Um, <laughs> Possibly. I don't know. He's not wearing like soccer playing gear or anything like that, but no. it could be you. So growing up near Glenelg, like Glenelg, from the perspective of being a kid, is kind of like a fun place to go, right? Hmm. So in Melbourne, it's a place called St Kilda. And, it, you know, it's like you go, it's like where you'd go on a day off, a day out. Yeah. Was was because you live nearby, was it that exciting to go to Glenelg? Was it your local uh, hotspot? Or- I mean, I was a couple of suburbs back from Glenelg itself. I mean, I could you could drive there in five minutes, but to me that still seemed a long way away as a kid. It was still a fun place to go. It was still a novel place to go, but it was less novel than going into Adelaide City Centre. That was a rarer thing to do. Going to Glenelg, you'd probably do once every two or three weeks, maybe, and then going into Adelaide City Centre is something you'd do every couple of months, maybe. Right. Right. Mm. I've forgotten the name of the term, but Glenelg, what is it when a word reads the same forwards and backwards? It's a palindrome. That's right, yeah. Well, Glenelg is a palindrome as well. So um, that's another novel. Also, one of the areas on Mars where one of those rovers uh, went, they, they kept naming the areas where the rovers were going, got called Glenelg as well. So for a while, there was all this talk about the latest picture from Glenelg on Mars when, it, when the rover was taking oh, pictures. Funny. Yeah. So that, that got me pretty excited. Do you know how this spoon came to be in the family? Just, you know, just accumulated by your mum and dad? Oh, look, it's very unsurprising. Glenelg features heavily in, in our family history, hmm. primarily because it's near where, where dad, when he came out from um, Holland with his um, first family, you know, they lived near Glenelg and, and they were, his dad like came to support football, like the Glenelg Tigers that you uh, mentioned yep. before. And that's why yep. years and years later, when he'd married again and had me um, living even in another state, I became a Tigers supporter of Richmond, you know, an entirely different team in the Victorian League because of dad's passion yep. for the Tigers as a young immigrant. Oh, well done, man. Uh, I was worried you weren't going to shoehorn Richmond Football Club into this section, but you've done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you led me there. You yeah. led me water. That's <laughs> all right. right. So all dad right. dad loved Glenelg. And there's you know, there's that drive down Glenelg with all those big high pine trees. It's yep. it's um Collie Reserve. Right, okay, yep. And mm. dad remembers them being he t- used to talk about them when they were very small trees. And as a kid I was like astonished as if that was hundreds of years ago, you know. <laughs> When, when your when your when your dad was around, the old gum tree was just called the gum tree. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the sapling. That's right. It's like the proclamation <laughs> sapling. And <laughs> your dad planted the old gum tree. We should have your dad so old jokes. <laughs> your dad so old he planted the old gum tree. <laughs> your dad's so old he sold the buffalo to Governor Hindmarsh. <laughs> Hey, you know there was the Buffalo replica that was a restaurant down at Glenelg. 
Um, I do, yeah. I, look, I'm assuming it's a replica because... <laughs> it was a replica, yeah. The other day it was just, like, torn down. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Do you know, like, for people who don't know, there's this little kind of marina area for boats down at Glenelg, and they built this replica of the old Buffalo ship, the famous ship that Governor Hindmarsh used, and they just put it in the marina, and it was like an onboard restaurant. It was it was a restaurant in the water. And do you know what? I never once set foot on it. And to me, it was like a dream. It was like the paradigm of fine dining. And I dreamed of one day being able to go to the restaurant on the Buffalo at Glenelg. And it never, ever happened. And it never will now. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I saw it the other day when it was half torn down. You know, the guys are just sort of, you know, dismantling yeah. it. And I went, oh, yeah. I wanted to go there. And yeah. then- <laughs> Think back over the hours, even years ago when I lived here, when I was younger, the, the hours upon hours upon hours we spent down at Glenelg, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just getting fish and chips, getting yeah. a year, never once taking the time to go to the Buffalo, but uh, now it was gone. I was like- You know the other place at Glenelg I dreamed of going and eating? Yeah. Hang on. Can I guess? Yep. Yep. The 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 the, the restaurant that rotated around at the top yep. of the building? Is that right? <laughs> The revolving restaurant on top of the tower, and I again, I don't, th- I don't think I ever went there, but I just remember as a kid, I would look at that tower, which was probably I don't know what eight stories high or something, but to me it was like you know a skyscraper, and mm. I knew there was this restaurant at the top that spun around, like, and you know I've been to revolving restaurants now and I know what they're like, but to me it was spinning at like a thousand revolutions per second, and I and I would say to mum and dad, how do they keep the soup in the bowls when it's moving so fast? <laughs> to me, it was like the gravitron. <laughs> it was, it was moving like a so record fast. player on top of a building. Yeah, yeah. It was, people were like pressed against the walls. It was moving so fast. Now that I've been to revolving restaurants, they're somewhat more disappointing. But I don't think I ever went up there. I don't know. I did. I did. I don't. I don't mean to brag, but I had. I had a lunch. <laughs> Formal Ooh. lunch at the top. Pastor Peter, man that we know, um, yeah. took me for lunch as a as a young man, and he he took me there to encourage me and encourage me to become a minister and stuff. That's when a boy becomes a man when he goes to the revolving restaurant at Glenelg. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> There's a there is there is one slight flaw in this story, and that is mm. it wasn't revolving that day for some reason. <laughs> That was a sign of things to come for your pastoral career. <laughs> it's, that's like saying, oh, yeah, I eventually did eat at the Buffalo, but there was no water in the marina that day and it was beached. <laughs> I have had Buffalo wings on other occasions in other places. That kind of counts. Uh, obviously, I want to put links for all these things into the notes for, for you know people to go and look at pictures, but I'm wondering if like things like the revolving restaurant have... Like a Wikipedia page or like, you know, the revolving restaurant at Glenelg. Is there a picture of it? Oh, yes. Yes, there is. God, it was an ugly building, wasn't it? Is it still there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, one presumes the building is still there. I've seen I've seen that riding mm. past the other day, but um, I don't know if it still revolves or what rotation it's at or anything. Well, if you also, if you happen to be listening to this podcast on YouTube, we'll also be, you know, having all the pictures on the screen. I'm looking at pictures of the buffalo. Oh, my God. Like, for a show that has lots of nostalgia, this episode's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the um, Going to the revolving restaurant on, on the one day when it's not revolving is, is a bit like like going to Macca's and then mum saying, oh, I've made a pack lunch. You know, like it's like... <laughs> So, what, what's it called when it's not revolving? It's just the restaurant. The, the restaurant. Yeah. I can't remember why it wasn't. It must. It might have been something like high winds or something. I don't know why. I don't know why that would high make a difference. Winds. It's like this. This building falls over in high winds if it's revolving. I don't know why. Um, okay. So now it's time for another giveaway of the unmade podcast spoons that exist yes i will be sending this after the episode do you want to do the honors again you did such good sound effects of spinning the wheel last time i would like to do that and i can i say now that they're actually out there i feel and people have seen them i imagine listening to this the anticipation is really high for the patrons because it's you know it's like oh wow i really want one of those so i'm going to pause for effect and Mm. then go there we go oh it's the, the old wheels getting a bit stuck it's not revolving very well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to give it another go? <laughs> All right, we'll give it another go. This is high wind, so I've got to be careful. 
Okay. Wow. There we go. <laughs> All right. There we go. And who's it going to be? Well, today the spoon is going to the United States of America. It is going to Angelo in Florida, who is one of our Patreon supporters and is now the proud owner of an unmade podcast, Souvenir Spoon. Wow. There's the champagne corks popping. <laughs> they, they, are, they, are, they are. Oh, by the way, people, if you want to go and see all of the spoons that have been so far featured on Spoon of the Week, you can go to spoonoftheweek.photos. Spoonoftheweek.photos. And that leads nicely to... Today's other sponsor. It's Hover. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm making a guess. You've bought the domain name Spoon of the Week through Hover, one presumes. Is that right? I have. I have. Hover is a domain registration service. It's your one-stop shop for buying domains at great prices. All the domains you could want, all the good suffixes, you know, your dot... Well, dot ninja is our favorite, dot com, dot net, dot photos. You can register them there. You can also manage them, control them, divert them. So I've diverted spoon of the week dot photos to the page where I store all the photos until such a time that I make a bespoke spoon of the week photo gallery. And I got that domain for 10 bucks because dot photos was on special this week. 10 bucks. That's nothing. Fantastic. Go to... Hover.com slash unmade. Hover.com slash unmade. And if you do that, there'll be uh, a code you can use to get 10% off your first purchase. 10% off. And they'll know you came from here, which is great. Hover.com slash unmade. I think domains are a great present too. I think it would be really fun to buy someone a domain like for Christmas or their birthday or something. So maybe that's something you can keep in mind. If there's someone that, in your life, like yeah. you know, who has everything and you can't think what to get them, why not get them a, a domain you think they might like that they can then own and use for their own purposes? That is a brilliant idea. I've never thought of yeah. that. That's a great yeah. idea. It's something, it's something additional to write on a card. You know what I mean? I have purchased yeah. you... This yeah. particular, you own it, and the person will feel, oh wow, I own this little bit yeah. of the internet, the cool name. And like, and even if they don't have a website, they could just divert it to like their Twitter or their Facebook. So you know, I could buy a domain called, you know, Tim Hine the Tiger Fan, and divert it to his Twitter. So when I give him a Christmas card and say, go to TimHindTheTigerFan dot com, wink, wink, and he types it in, it'll go to like his Twitter page or his Facebook page or whatever. So yeah, just putting that idea out there, people. I Maybe think that's a do great it. idea. You can also Thank send you. a message through it as well. Like, you know, like if it's, you know, say Bob's buying Lisa a, a you know, present and he could buy BobLovesLisa.com and, you know what I mean, sends it. Yeah, it's just a nice yeah, way of yeah. saying um, the message that you want to send in the card. That's a great idea. And they go to, they go there and you can put a message up, which is the con- the content of this card is at this and they go there and then that's where the message is. Good idea. Good idea. Ah, not just a pretty face. Hang on a second. Hang on a sec. Did you? I don't. I didn't. Did you do all the info for Hover, like Hover slash Unmade, and the technical things you needed to say? I didn't. You're like an old person. It's not Hover slash Unmade. It's Hover dot com slash Unmade. No, I've bought Hover <laughs> slash Unmade, man, <laughs> and I'm sending to you as a gift, and it diverts to Hover dot com slash Hover dot com slash Unmade. And yes, I did mention it, but. You can't mention it too many times, I guess. The people at Hover are going to be over the moon. Nice work, Hover. Nice work, man. And nice work to me too, for reminding you. What's your idea for a podcast? All right. This one is inspired by you because the name of this podcast is called Incomplete. I I was hoping it was going to be called The Handsome Man Podcast or something. (laughs) It's by by. (laughs) Incomplete. Inspired by Brady. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> incomplete. I yeah. didn't finish it or something like that. This week we were talking and you were filling out an application uh, mm-hmm. for something. And I said, oh, you have to do this, you know, and we got chatting about that. You said, I often get halfway through and then I just get annoyed and leave it. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and then maybe come back and try again. And I yeah. reckon we all have a lot of these little tasks and projects in our life that are half done. Nice idea. Cracker, yeah. Tim. Cracker. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Mike Drop. I'm retiring undefeated. For- <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week. For- <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, that that one thing. Like that one thing. Yeah, great idea. Famously, house renovations are a bit like this. You know what I mean? We got yes. most of the bathroom done, but oh, there's yep. a bit of this left, or yep. you know, oh, there's. I must finish that that extra door on the cupboard in the kitchen that I meant to screw on, but haven't got <laughs> yes. to yet, and it's there yes. for twenty years. Uh, <laughs> Novels, your great novel. <laughs> that yes, you're writing. yeah. No, that's right. Writing one. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah everyone's. I'm like working on it. Um, yeah. There's also novels you're reading as well. Like I've got lots and lots of novels that I've got into and I've lost interest and I've got to a point where I've given myself permission now to go, no, nah, stuff it. I'm just putting it down. Like I'm not going to feel bad about it or I'm, you know, there's like little rules. You mustn't start another novel until you finish this one right to the end and I've gone, no, nah, yeah. stuff it. But there is a little part of me, you know, when you're packing them up and moving them around and stuff going, oh, right, I can see like the dog-eared where I got in this one and it's like, oh, should I give it another go? Lots of those around that. the place. I love that. Sure. I love the idea of people talking about their unfinished projects. To to qualify for your podcast, Tim, does the project have to have been started? Well, how could it be incomplete if it hasn't been started? Is are you talking about just best intentions? I'm going to get to yeah, like that like, one like if I like if I've said I'm going to do something and I've been meaning to do it for ten years, but I've never even started. It's just like a dream that I haven't done. Does that count as incomplete or does it have to be something you've kind of made attempts at? Like, you know, you've built the foundations or you've written the first page or you've, you know, you've done something towards starting the project but not finished the job. Because it, cause it, it feels like it shouldn't really be a podcast for just, you know, dreams that you haven't done. No. Because that that kind of opens almost too wide a door. It feels like it needs to be something you have started and aborted or started multiple times. Yes, I think that's the case. I think there's a subgenre of things I'd mm. like to get to one day, and I think that's yeah. quite different to I've I've actually got, you know, half a manuscript. I've actually there's a word document on my computer that says novel and, you know, yeah. It's, that's 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 quite a big step in itself. Just simply wanting to one day write a novel is pretty yeah. common. Yeah. So I think it's got to be ink started but not complete. What's your glaring example? What's your big one? Oh, the one that looms in my mind is the PhD. So I'm I'm in the middle of a PhD, and it's um you know it's just in the back of my mind all the time. And every time I'm doing something else when I could be doing that or something else when I should be doing that in the time, there's a little, there's an internal dialogue of, oh, but this is urgent. I need to be doing this. And yeah. often it is, but you don't have that little voice when it actually is urgent because you just are doing the thing you should be doing. But there are other times when it's like, oh, I should be doing the, the PhD or. Does it have a deadline or a finish date that is like slipping or moving? Or is it just some, or is the, is everything still on schedule? It's just weighing on you. No, it's on schedule. It doesn't, it, you've got, you, you're very quite regimented these days with a university. You've got like milestones that you have to meet along the way. And I'm, yeah, I'm on track. But I've also had a couple of deferrals, partly because I stopped and did like another doctorate, which I did finish, and some other projects and then time. But then, you know, okay. COVID happened and then there's other things. And so I do have a okay. deadline and I'm on track for it, but it's still, I wish it was over. See, I'm not sure that would qualify for um, the podcast if it's like on schedule, like, you know, if it's something you're on target for. But because of those deferrals, maybe maybe it does. Yeah. No, no, you're mm. right. That's right. That's the one that comes quickly to mind, but it may not qualify because it's mm. in, it's in, it's active. We could qu- talk about inactive and active. You know. Mm. Well, can I just say, Tim, as someone who you know has a doctorate and is a doctor, you know, don't worry about it. You'll get there, man. You'll get there, and and one day you'll be like me. <laughs> and we'll say no more about that. <laughs> I must read your thesis sometime. <laughs> Mate, it's all on YouTube. Go and watch it's it. It's all on YouTube. That's fair <laughs> enough. That's a fair enough comment, too. That's an absolutely fair enough comment. I, I do like the idea. Is there anything else? Is there? I guess there's nothing around the house, really, because you've only just moved. Um, no, but, no. Everything's everything's mm, perfect mm. around the house now. <laughs> everything's nah. just as we want it. There's a particular coffee machine I've been meaning to buy, but um, I keep pushing that off, partly because it's, you know, a little bit of money. But I must get yeah. to that. 
Um, everything else is done. Everything else is done. The tubs are, you know, we've cleaned, we've unpacked. Everything's just perfect. It's like, don't lift a copy cup because everything's just right where we want it now. So I guess my one is yeah. what you mentioned is this application. I'm I, I, I'm happy to say I'm, I'm applying for an Irish passport because I'm eligible for one. And because of the whole Brexit debacle, I don't want to lose my access to Europe. So I've been doing the application process. But it's just such a difficult process. And they require so many old documents that I don't have, like my grandfather's marriage and death certificate and, all you know, all these, you know, wow. my grandpa died before I was born uh, and all this sort of stuff. So every time I pick up the application again and start going through it, I find some other document that's going to be impossible to get and take months to find and from some old church in Ireland or something. So it's this kind of, the application's taken me years, but I'm constantly <laughs> working on it and I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for more. I'm, 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 I swear they're adding documents to it every time I go and do the application again. But now I'm waiting for two more certificates to come from different places and then I think I'll finally have everything and I can lodge the application. Do they have any citizenship? Te- I know, I know, it's not a passport. It's not a citizenship. But like, you know, yeah. do they ask things like, um, you know, can you name two members of the cause? Um, when's the last <laughs> the time course. you drank Guinness? <laughs> <laughs> I could sing quite a few cause songs. Well, that should be part of the application, shouldn't it? That should be, yeah. yeah. Send your recording now of. Um, I can name all four members of the cause. There's the really? there's the there's the pretty one who sings, yeah. the violinist, the drummer, yep. and the brother. And the brother, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the brother. He is if ever there's anyone just known as the brother, it's the guy in the court. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he even yeah. in the photos? I don't know. It's like <laughs> this awesome band with the brother. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> He is, he's the he's the buffalo of band members. <laughs> it's just, it should just be torn down. It's an anthem. It's just, <laughs> imagine going to see the cause, and then it's just like, oh, sorry, um, the three girls aren't. It's able to be here tonight. It's just the brother, but don't worry, he can play everything. It's just, <laughs> just the brother solo. <laughs> He's just taking the name, the cause, and touring with it. It's just him on his own. It's like, hey, I can play all the songs. I can sing. It's, what, are you, what are you complaining about? Leave me breathless. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ultimate revolving restaurant, not revolving, is going to see the cause, yeah. and it's just the brother. <laughs> the... Uh, oh, your incomplete idea like, is so good, it lends itself to other things, doesn't it? Like, you know... Huge projects that are incomplete, like, you know, the Sacra Familia or whatever it is in um, Barcelona, building projects that don't that aren't finished for one reason or another, ones that have just been abandoned or ones that have taken a really long time. Like, there's always these public infrastructure projects, aren't there, that kind of are promised and you think will never deliver. Adelaide's famous for them because everything gets blocked by the NIMBYs. Yeah. <laughs> That would be great to be able to talk to people. Why is this incomplete? What, what, you know, are you going to get to it? Do you have a plan in place? Is it just that you're avoiding something or are you, is it just best intentions and, and all the rest of it? Are you too busy or have you run out of money? What's the reason for the incompleteness? Go on to our subreddit for the, uh, for this episode and tell us about your incomplete project. We'd love to hear about it and we'll tell you what we think. We'll tell you how to complete it. Have you ever written a novel or have you, do you have half a novel written somewhere? No. You've written short stories, haven't you? But you haven't written a... Not really. Not really. I haven't got the stamina at the moment. I, got, I haven't got the time. What about you? Have you got a novel on the go? No, no, no I can't. I can't write fiction. If I said to you... You have to write a fiction story right now, yep. right now, and like I forced you into it somehow. What would it be about? I guess you you end up writing specifically about what you know. So I guess I would write about like I'm sitting here in my office at the college. I guess I would write about like a faculty and what happens in relationships in a college and an academic area because that's that's kind of an interesting little world that people wouldn't know about. I mm. guess that's what I know a bit about, and I've got some you know anecdotes and things that I could write about that. Hmm. That'd be an interesting challenge about, you know, write, write, do this right now. Like you have to, because there's an old saying that says, oh, I can't save money. And it's like, look, if I said that, you know, if in six months you don't bring back $10,000, then you'll be, you know, shot or something like that. Then you would, Hmm. you would do it. You'd go and you'd, you'd actually save the money under enough 
pressure, stress, motivation. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you were to say, Tim, you know, like in a week's time, I want you to produce a, you know, like 5,000 or 10,000 word short story, mm. I, I would do it, obviously. And I, mm. it would have characters and a plot and all the rest of it. It would just be very thin and bad and one dimensional and all the rest of it. But mm. I just, the idea of writing a novel feels like such a vast task. And, you know, quality, it's all about quality and interest and readability. I just, Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's me. I, I would write. I would write a short story about two friends: one who was born in Glenelg, and one whose dad was Dutch, who came together to make a podcast. And after a couple of years of moderate to low success, <laughs> were chosen by NASA to go to the moon and become heroes of space. <laughs> Do you think there's any wish fulfillment happening in this particular <laughs> plot line? <laughs> you said right what you know. <laughs> I was right on board with it until you said go to the moon. I'm like, oh, I have to go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> you must be the only person who I'm friends with who would be genuinely disappointed if they had to go to the moon. You and my wife. <laughs> All my other friends dream of going to the moon. <laughs> I'm like, and for oh, you it's man. like, oh, oh, can I do anything else? <laughs> can right. I go to the buffalo? <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> But this is an incomplete. I think you have space aspirations. Like you'd like to go to the moon and you've kind of put things in place in an initial sense, but it's kind of incomplete. You haven't got around to actually going to the moon. What have I put into place? I haven't even got an Irish passport. (laughs) You've got a a moon passport. (laughs) You've like, you know, you've met people at NASA. You've got hats and stuff. You know what I mean? Like you kind of, you know. I've got hats. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, like NASA hats and stuff signed All right. by the man in I can the just moon. Picture, I can just picture launch day and they're like, oh, we need someone to go to the moon. Oh, has, is anyone here wearing a hat? You, <laughs> you, sir, get on the rocket. You've, you've got a NASA hat. You look like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Because I have a fragment of knowledge about the moon now, someone would turn to me one day and say, name one crater on the moon. I'll go... Glenelg. And they like, well done, sir. Yeah, that, You're off. that was Mars, man. Was it Mars? <laughs> and, and it wasn't a crater. Mars is the one that's further away, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I did have a Patreon idea here, but I think it's so good. I think we're going to want to talk about this one for longer, so I'm going to save it for another episode because it, be, it would be a waste to do it now. All right. All right. But trust me, it's a good one. All right. I think we're done. I think we're done.